Firstly, I just done a store reset, and on that store reset, I didn't show one item. So let me go to the store and let me quickly just show you. So of the store, I just gone over this on my last video, but there is something on the right bumper tab. So one tab over called the seasonal tab, and we've got the call of Hydra. So the only reason I'm including it into this video is because I didn't include it in the weekly store reset video. But go over to the seasonal tab, and you've got the call of Hydra, and the call of Hydra at the front has this figurehead that actually makes noises and has dripping venom from the mouth. I think this is really cool. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the other video. So by now, most of you have probably made it to the end game. And you've probably hit a wall thinking, what do I do? Where do I start? And uh, yeah, just a lot of simple questions. But there's going to be basically in this video me explaining to you what I would do if I was to just have started the end game again and how I would do things differently. Just so you guys that have just made it to the end game or are making it to the end game know exactly what to do. So, firstly, obviously, you've now become Kingpin. And you've probably more than likely completed your Skurlocks quest and your Ramas quest. If you don't know where they are, obviously your Skurlocks are here. And then your Ramas would be over in Telok Panjara up here. Now, once you've completed that, you'd head through here between the job board and the bounty board. And you'd head over to Le Pont Mouet. And when you enter this location, there is a lady there called Yanita. Now, Yanita will have another storyline quest for you. And you would have to go ahead and complete that. Unfortunately, as I have completed it, I cannot show you that storyline. But once you've spoken to Yanita Nara, you will then get that quest. Once you've got that quest, you will start something and you do a trial of a hostile takeover. Once you've done that hostile takeover, she will then allow you to come into the smuggler's hideout. Once you enter the smuggler's hideout, you are then filled with a vast amount of information and left with a brain block thinking, what the heck do I do now? How do I progress and how do I get pieces of eight in a fast and efficient way to proceed with the game in order to be able to play it? Yo, this Shell Vort just subscribed to my YouTube channel. Welcome in. If you subscribe while I'm making a YouTube video, then I'll make sure I try and give you a shout out, providing I see it on the left hand side of my screen. Um, so then, yeah, once you've done that, you would come in here and it would have, should have explained to you the basics that you go over to the distillery, you'd insert items into your distillery and then you would turn that into rum or whatever other product it be. So you provide materials and then once you've provided them, you can then turn it into whatever it may be. So that's great. But that doesn't really help you progress with the end game. So what do we need to know about the end game? Well, I'm going to open up the map. Now, excuse my map. Obviously, there's a lot more on it than yours probably will. But if we go to the hell map, so we go over one tab to the right, you won't see the golden tags on them. But what you will see is if you just go back to the normal map, you'll probably notice that there is loads of the lumber yards. There's loads of, for instance, this uh, foundries. You've got the... What is this? The Rafia Weavers. You've got, so you've got all of these locations dotted around the maps, apart from obviously outposts. Now, all of these outposts turn into this. Okay, they turn into a manufactory. But the manufactory starts off looking something like this. Now, the question is, how do you even get one of these to make it become this to then turn into this? Well, if you look down on the bottom left of my screen, so when you're in the Helm tab and you highlight over an area... In the bottom left, you'll see next takeover opportunity. So in two minutes from now, I'm going to be able to show you and give you a perfect example. Now, every time, I think it's every 30 minutes, there'll be a hostile takeover opportunity. And effectively, you are given the red aisle to start off with, which is all of this area that we see down here, which starts from where the Mang Odin ghost ship is over Obelet, all the way up to... The, the trade route here, the dragon's back underneath where you have the sea monster. So this is the Red Isle. Now, one major thing I would do is if you're doing this and you're still progressing a little bit further, then and you already know the basics, when you get your first 5,000 pieces of eight, do not do the East Indies to start off with. Make sure you put your money into the coast of Africa. This is where I messed up because I put my pieces of eight over into the East Indies and it really threw me off because... To go around here collecting all these bits and bobs was just an absolute nightmare. So then what I end up doing was end up upgrading my Red Isles. And then now I've just finally started moving over to the coast of Africa. But if I was you and I was first starting off, I would go ahead and collect all the Red Isles. Once you've collected all the Red Isles, you want to try and upgrade them to level 7. 
Now, the reason I say upgrade them to level 7, because once they're at level 7, you have gone from a capacity of... So, let me just show you. If you go to this level 6 one here, you can see on the right, when they're level 6, they've got a capacity of 300. But just simply going from 300... Um, sorry. Yeah, from level 6 to level 7, you're going from 300 capacity to 800 capacity. So, all of these level 7s that are now full, all are going to make me 800 pieces of 8 each which is quite a lot. So once I've finally turned all of this in the red aisle to level seven, you can see I went up to level eight. Now that is good. There's nothing wrong with that because you can see here that they go from 800 all the way up to 1,400, which is almost double of what it was before. But the best way to do this, I believe, is to get everything to level seven, then move over to the coast of Africa, and then get everything here to level seven, and then what you want to do from that part, now you can see I've got hostile takeovers starting in five minutes. So I'm going to join one of these events. Now your events will be starting in the red aisle and they'll pop up like that. And what you want to do is you want to join them. Now, there is an issue here. When you do a hostile takeover, they are PvP. And I understand a lot of you do not want to be doing PvP. It shouldn't be too long because a lot of people have probably got their factories. So you don't have to worry too much about PvP. But if you do want to entirely skip PvP... Well, unfortunately, I can't give you an example because I've got all the areas uh, that are taken over now. So I'm not getting this option. I will, I do get the option for the coast of Africa and for the East Indies. But effectively, what it is, is you know when you look at the normal map and you see these, which are the, the convoys, for instance. Well, there's a legendary heist. It looks like a convoy. However, it's got a chest on it. Now, if you were to look at that convoy, what it does is it would give you a name of a hostile takeover. So it would probably say... Uh, like this, it will say the Harufu Weaver, it will say the Jaiwei Foundry, it will say one of these things, or or anything over here as well in the Red Isles, or anything over in the East Indies yet again, and it will, what it would be, it's a PvE event, so you don't have to do PvP, you can join in on the PvE event, and with doing so, this is now allowing you to be able to go and capture one of these without doing PvP and having people, your friends, or higher levels up, or just the same level, capture these takeovers together. Now, when you do one of them, you do want to be careful because as soon as you kill it, you want the strongest ship and also probably one of the fastest ships to pick it up because you then have to get to a main dock, whether it be St. Anne or whether it be Telok Panjara, you're going to want to get to one of them. But the person who is carrying the merchandise, if they die, you lose everything. And then you have to wait another 30 minutes or however long it may be for another one of those to appear. Typically, it does respawn every 30 minutes if you do have all three areas available. Obviously, the one that has appeared available is in the Red Isle. And as I don't have the Red Isle... It's not currently available. Now, I am going to want to go and make my way over to the hostile event here to kind of show you what you've got to do if you don't remember. Or actually, in this case, I will quit that because I don't really need to show you. You've already done the Anita thing, so you've seen what that's like. The only one that you really needed advice for, uh, advice for was the takeover, the legendary heist. Now, the, the legendary heist, yet again, like I said, it's just a convoy. It's just your normal old convoy like this one. You destroy it, and then you'll capture one of these locations. Okay, so now we know that once we've got these locations, we want to go ahead and keep collecting the coins. Because in order to level these up, you can see down there in the bottom right, in order to make this go from level 6 to level 7, I need to have pieces of 8, and I need 2,000 of them to turn it from level 6 to level 7. So yes, it does seem like quite a lot of pieces of 8, but if you think I've been going around collecting them at 300 to make uh, to, to to level it up, but once it goes from 300 to 800, well then I'm cutting my time in half with how many of these I'm collecting. So effectively, if I go and collect everything in the red aisle with it is fully maxed out, and I haven't got much silver because I wasn't really on during the weekend, but normally I'd have everything full, uh, and when it's level 7, it's every day. So you can just go and do it once a day and collect all your bits and bobs and then enjoy the game for the rest of the day. And then obviously, once you've got everything to level 10, you'll be able to enjoy, I think it's 48 hours in total once they're level 10. So you, in theory, you don't have to do any of this for two days straight to be able to go ahead and proceed. Right, so we now understand what the hostile takeovers are and we know where we want to level up to. Now, once you've got everything to level 7, you want to come back to this location, which is obviously your office. You've got one of these here and you've got one of them in Telok Panjara. Now, over here is where you can craft your rums and over in Telok Panjara is where you can craft your opium. 
But when you are here, you're going to be wanting to know how to get silver. Because silver, you're going to need to be able to fund your manufactory. So here we can see this is level 6. And at level 6, I need to fund it. So I need to press A. And when I'm at A, I've got all these options to fund it. Well, you want to be able to get the most out of your hour. So I can get 54 pieces of A every hour. But you can see at the bottom, there is a silver cost. Now, when I do that, it's costing me silver. So... The higher the levels, for instance, this level 8, when I go and fund this, it's costing me 17,000 silver. I need to have a way where I can get silver quite frequently and quite a lot of it. So what you want to do is you want to go over to your supply network. You want to interact with it. And this is going to be probably one of your most efficient ways of getting silver. So it's left done in the background. You could do this once an hour. So once you come to the supply network, you've got your liaisons. So you want to go ahead and accept all of these that you can. And then you want to accept these as well. And then effectively, you want to just back out and you want to fast travel. So you can fast travel with these. Now, you cannot fast travel with, let me uh, quickly go. So you cannot fast travel with order registries. You can only fast travel with um, directed. So if I look at the map now, I'll be able to see where the other ones are. So it's here. Now, I can fast travel to this. So firstly, we'll go here. Now, it does, the location does change of the the person you speak to to get materials but it does not change for the roving so i'm just going to quickly go over to this person and what you want to do you're going to keep getting these contracts popping up on your screen you don't have to hold to track them unless you it's going to make it a little bit easier for you do obviously what what suits you best but just come up here uh, or, or wherever the location is and you basically want to see them hands you can see that one's dropping coins into a hand and you can see the green octopus the green octopus is showing that this event is the one i'm doing so i want to go and ha hand this in now it's going to cost me silver to hand it in to get these materials but these materials for every 10 sorry yeah, every 10, I'm making 1,000 silver. So, obviously, I'm making... Yeah, I'm spending 600, but I'm getting 6,000 silver back. Now, I'm going to go and drop these into my inventory... Uh, into my warehouse, because if you have them in your inventory, you will get pirates come after you. So, always try and make sure if you've got the materials, drop them in your inventory. Now, to do this one over here, the roving, you want to just simply fast travel to Il Michel. And when you're at Il Michel... All you want to do is just set sail and head over. I don't think my ship's fully customized, so I don't know uh, what's going on. It says, it's, oh no, it's level 11. So just set sail, and then just as you enter the sea, you will see there is some ships in the distance with some white sails. Or in this case, there is one ship over in the distance. Now, you could have a blister on, you could have some long lines, and you can hear it. You can see here at the top, it does sell, say Helm Leerson, which is the same thing we saw before, and it's sailing. Now, there's two ways to obviously interact with this. You can get the debuff that you can see down the bottom left of my screen with that red eye, which means pirates are going to come after me for an hour, and I'm not too sure what else actually debuffs, so I am sorry. If someone could put it in the comments down below, I will pin it, whatever the helm debuff actually means. I know that you definitely get pirates, but what else happens, I'm not too sure. Now, do not do this as well in a brigantine when you come over to this roving ship. Because if you do this in the Brigantine, your inventory or your cargo will fill right up and you will not be able to get all of the items. So make sure you get a ship with a bit more cargo. This ship that I'm in right now, I'm probably not going to have enough cargo. So I'm carrying torpedoes that I don't even really need to be carrying. So when you go up to it, you can interact with it and you can accept all the supplies. Now if you look, when I accept one of these, I can get 120 cane and I can get one hundred another 120 cane as well as poppy. So I can get 240 cane and 240 poppy. But look what happens if I kill it. You do get the hell mark. But not only do you get the hell mark, if I go into my inventory right now and I look at my cargo, I've got 600 and 600. So your 120 that you were meant to get actually turns out to be 300 a piece. So you're, you're over doubling the amount you're going to get. That's why I highly suggest this. Now, if you don't like the pirates and you don't want to deal with them, then don't do it. The helm... Uh, debuff only disappears as well when you're in game so it's an hour of your time in game is what it takes to make it disappear oh i could have probably done with killing that but i'm not going to then plague help bring it bring as you want to kill because if you look at your smugglers pass and you go to your wave one they are the defeat 30 plague bringers there on the fourth one down on the left to uh, get the heads and then the heads also spawn them pirates that then you can farm la pest lockers apparently people are saying you can't really farm them as easy now who knows but yeah you want to be killing them every time you see them but for the sakes of the video to not drag it on i'm just going to quickly get back to this 
and go fast travel back to the main area to explain further. So here we go. We are docking in Il Michel. So let me quickly disembark and then do the same thing as I said before. When you've got materials on you, make sure you go ahead and you put them into your cargo. So go to your manage cargo and just a tip, if you tap X or whatever the prompt is, you'll see at the bottom there to mark, you can transfer multiple things into the warehouse at once. So you don't have to tra transfer one by one by one by one. Just a simple tip, tip that I think is really helpful because I know a lot of people still don't do it. So we're going to travel back to St. Anne, but you could go to St. Anne or Teluk Punjara. And once we have fast traveled here, we want to go back to the helm. Now, I showed you where it is in terms of running. But in this case as well, if you look down the bottom right, you will see that octopus logo. Whatever that button is for you to interact, hold that button down and it will actually fast travel you back to the helm location, which is your office space. And when you are here and you've collected the materials, you'll go over to your distillery. You'll put it in there. You'll let it cook away. And when it cooks away, you will get your products. Now, with these products, how do you make silver? Well, simple. You want to just head straight out and you want to go back to where Skurlock was. So you know that Skurlock was up here in the area because you've probably done the missions. You want to literally head straight down here, straight through where the bounties are. And you want to head to that building here at the back left. Now, if you talk to him without doing this next step, you're not going to be able to sell the stuff. So you actually have to move it from your warehouse to your cargo to be able to sell it to him to get silver. Now, the only reason I'm showing this because, yet again, you're going to need quite a lot of silver. And this is probably the most passive way to make silver in the game, which is just an easy way. And you can just kind of forget about the rest. And as long as you're doing this, you'll get it in. So I'm going to go down to the materials I got. So let's say I've got the white skull rum. Reven Chist. Let's go. Welcome to the desk, God Amigo. So I'm going to transfer it. I can't transfer at all now there is a bug as well guys so if it is full drop go down one and transfer it over do not transfer all of it to you because there's a potential chance that you lose everything that you have in your inventory when you do transfer it over this they are looking to fix it but it can make everything disappear so do not do that and um, once you've come in and you've got it onto your ship so make sure it's not in your warehouse make sure it's on your ship and once it's on your ship you want to go and talk to Skurlock or you want to go talk to Rama which is in the other location there you go you can see the cell you can sell them items and I've just immediately made another 68,000 and then I can go out and I can get more stuff and I can sell it to Skurlock or I can go and get more opium from the other place and I can then sell it to Rama. Now, let's go back to the helm. That's how you make the silver to fund the empire constantly. Now, once we're in here, once everything is level 7, you want to come up to the helm empire overview, which is this desk right here. Just a quick note as well, guys, while you're here, we can see what the map looks like. So, if I was to go up and I was to... Oh, 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 oh. oh you see here on the desk... That is the Red Isle right there. That is the coast of Africa. That is, uh, sorry, that's East Indies. And then we can see up here is where the next locations are going to be, which does say there Arabia. So is it confirmed? Who knows? But we got the Indian Ocean, we got the Red Isles, we got the East Indies, and we got Arabia. So I think that's what's coming next. So massive shout out to that. Anyway, um, I digress. So once you've got everything to level 7, you want to come into your desk. Now, you want to go all the way over to upgrades. When you're in upgrades, the first one I would probably go for would be the smuggler's operations. The reason I say the smuggler's operations is because you can get more supply contracts here in the supply network. So it means you get more materials, meaning you can make more silver. Because the more silver you can make, the more you can fund your empires. So firstly, upgrade that. Secondly, I would go ahead and upgrade your empire management. Now, as you can see, I haven't upgraded it all the way. But when you upgrade this, it actually increases all your pro profits and your trade routes. So it can go up to 50% increased profit bonus for the established trade routes. So once you've got all the trade routes, you're going to be getting serious amounts. And then you'll go ahead and upgrade everything else. The last one to upgrade really is smuggler skills. Now, I only upgraded, upgraded this at the start was for this one. Because when the game, uh, when 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 I first hit end game, a lot of people were doing PvP. And if you are noticing when you're doing hostile takers takeovers, people are doing PvP. But maybe this is something that you want to get as well. It just helps that you're um, sinking ships and getting ten percent more than them, so you're almost guaranteeing yourself to win it over them. And obviously, the more you put into it, the higher that percentage gets. And then you want to go for these for the more coin. So, like I said, the first one. The last one, then these three, and then this one if needed. And obviously, I would eventually go ahead and do all of them. You've got plenty of time. You've got 83 days. So we've got loads of time. Now, 
Why are we doing all this? Well, you obviously that for one, there's a leaderboard. I don't know if you're interested in the leaderboard, but on the left of the screen, you can see the seasonal reset. But on the left, we can see there's another reward there called, or it doesn't say called, it just says 900, 1000, 1200. Now, if you look at the top of my screen as well, you can see that that is sovereigns. Now, sovereigns typically buy you some of the highest graded loot. Now, is it the best? Who knows? Because of the weapons I'm using on my ship are currently the Zamazamas. But you can get Dards, Dard, Dardanelles, Dardanelles, I don't know how to say it. And you'll basically come over to your Nita here. Amy Spencer, welcome to the Death Squad. Go into the black market, and in the black market, you can see Pieces of Eight can buy you all of this stuff. Now, do not buy all of the these wares if you need to buy weapons. You can get these from just doing roving contracts. So don't do it here or do not purchase them here with pieces of eight. I made that mistake. Don't make that mistake. So here are some that you could buy with the sovereigns. For instance, the twin winch ballista you could buy with 400 sovereigns. And simply as you're leveling up, you will get pieces of eight. And the more pieces of eight you get, the more sovereigns you get. And the more sovereigns you get, the more of these weapons you can get. As well as the armor down here. You've probably seen that down here. There is, um, there's obviously lots of cosmetics. There's blueprints. Uh, some of these blueprints are amazing. So you can increase the starboard weapon damage by 10%. But down here you've got the Black Prince Armour, which is one of the armors that are really good, as well as the uh, the Wraithful Ward. Not something I've really worked with yet, but might be good. But it's got a 420 armor rating, which can boost your gear score up to level 12. But most importantly, it's got a perk on it, which reduces damage taken by 50% when a whole health is less than 33%, which is some armor that you would have seen me put on some of my builds. As well as the ship, if you want to get the Sandbook, you can get for 5,000 pieces of 8. Now, would I get the Sandbook first? Probably not. I would probably actually, if I was to start again, I would go onto my map. I would get the Red Isle hostile takeovers and then I would get the coast of Africa and get everything to level 7. And then you'll be having more piece of 8 than flipping cents. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helped you all with the end game. And at least that way you know where to start. So start, get all the hostile takeovers, all the PvE events. Do Africa. Yet again, everything's level 7. Then when everything's level 7, upgrade your book fully in the helm. Once you've upgraded your book fully in the helm, then go ahead and upgrade everything from level 7 to level 10. Rinse and repeat. And then obviously Season 2, which is not too far away now. Season 2, we are going to be having Fleet Management. Now, what that completely entails, I don't know. I don't speak to them direct. I am a Ubisoft partner, so thank you, Ubisoft. Um, but... Fleet management, I presume, is going to be able to collect coins for us or help us with collecting coins. I'm not too sure. Um, it's going to be something probably along them lines. Otherwise, they wouldn't add it to it. And, uh, yeah, make a massive difference to the game. But the good thing is, at least this way, you're figuring out the best routes and stuff on, on what to do. But when you do get the Red Isles, the best route, I'd say, would be to go from Shijavu down, up. All the way around, come down here, collect this, go through this river, go down, come out, come down, zigzag all the way down round, come all the way around the outside, on the inside, and then up to St. Anne. And that's how I do the Red Isles. And then the coast of Africa, I'm yet to discover a perfect route. Um, there is loads of stuff put on the Discord as well. So if you go down to the description, you can see in Discord. I am live on Tuesdays and Thursday evenings on Twitch. So if you have any questions that you want answered straight away, I do answer majority, I'd say, about 80% of the comments that get thrown at me on Twitch. So if you've got any questions, you just want to join in for a bit of fun, feel free to do so. Uh, and I think that covers everything. Any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Like, follow, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.